The law of demand says the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded will be. The lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded will be. Demand curves are downward sloping. And we also said a change in price is a movement along the demand curve. So we're going to talk about a few things which actually shift the demand curve. One of those things is a change in income. As income increases, people want more of every good at a given price. We can represent this by shifting the demand curve to the right. We'll call this D2. As income goes up for a given price, let's say P1, the quantity demanded will increase. So P1, Q1 with our original demand curve, uh, we get Q1, price over to the demand curve down to quantity. Uh, with higher level of income, we go over to D2 from P1, and we end up with Q2. It's been an increase in the quantity demanded due to a change, or in our example, an increase in income. If income were to decrease, the demand curve would shift from D1 in and to the left. We'll call this D3. If we use our original P1, we see there's a drop to Q3. So there's a change in quantity demand based upon a negative change in income. Second thing that can change a demand curve is a change in the number of consumers. So if we think of the market for beer, say D1 is only individuals who are 21 years or older are able to buy alcohol and consume it. If we were to change the law, so uh, the minimum drinking age was 18, we would see a shift to D2. There would be an increased number of people available to go out and purchase alcohol at the store. If instead we were to say the legal drinking age was 30, we'd be shifted to the demand curve in and to the left for alcohol. A third reason why we might see a change in the demand curve is the price of a related good. What do we mean by related good? What we mean is a substitute or a complement. So a substitute for beer might be hard liquor, or another substitute might be wine. So if we saw the price of wine increase, people might start drinking more beer. More precisely, their demand for beer would increase. We would go from D1 to D2. But if, for example, the price of wine decreased, people might substitute away from beer and start drinking wine because it's less expensive. So you'd see a decrease in demand from D1 to D3. Another related good in this case is that of complements. So a good example is hot dogs and hot dog buns. So if we saw the price of hot dogs go up, we would see a decrease in demand for hot dog buns. If the price of hot dogs went down, we would see an increase in the demand for hot dog buns as these two goods are consumed together. Another reason for the demand curve to shift is a change in expectations. If we had the market for, let's say, a cell phone or a TV, uh, in the week leading up to Black Friday, we would think maybe the price of that TV or that cell phone that I was looking to buy might go down as a Black Friday deal. That means, at least in the interim, my demand for that good or service is going to decrease and go to the left, as I think the price will be re reduced in the future. However, if I expect the price of that good to go up in the future, it will increase my demand in the present time period. So expectations about the future, about future prices, the future availability of a product, uh, make it that the demand curve is able to be shifted. Uh, and then the last reason that I'm going to stop, discuss is a change in tastes and preferences. What if we were to say, so it's been scientifically proven that beer cures cancer. We might expect more people to want to go out and purchase beer. We expect the demand for beer to increase from D1 to D2. Conversely, if we said beer causes cancer, and we were able to definitively show that, what we might see is a decrease in demand from beer from D1 to D3, so less people would be willing to go out and, and drink and uh, purchase beer. So for all these reasons, we're able to shift the demand curve either out towards Z2 or in towards uh, D3.